Hello, I'm Rukia, a Commissioner within Adult Social Care in Birmingham City Council. My team is responsible for the neighbourhood network schemes in Birmingham. New Locals report from earlier in the year, Community Power the Evidence, says, Community power is an idea whose time has come. At its heart, community power is based on the principle that communities have a wealth of knowledge and assets within themselves, which, if understood and nurtured by practitioners and policymakers, has the potential to strengthen resilience and enable prevention-focused public services. Each of Birmingham's communities have a wealth of assets, active citizens, volunteer-led activity, small grassroots organisations, faith organisations, citywide and national organisations, which are working for the benefit of the community. In this video, we will explain how neighbourhood networking schemes in Birmingham start from understanding and seeking out that knowledge and identifying assets with a focus on activities, support and services for the over 50s. Adult social care has developed a prevention first agenda and adopted the use of the three conversations model. Director of adult social care, Graham Betts, explains his vision. I think we have to go back to what social work is, where it came from and, and so on and so forth. And I, I mean, I do believe it's a community based activity and that means you need to understand your community and the people in it. And that includes, you know, that rich tapestry, you know, of groups and individuals and all the things that exist in a local community and how you, you know, utilise them for the benefit of the people who live in the community. And that's what it's about, you know. Each of Birmingham's 10 constituencies has a neighbourhood network scheme to support this approach. They're known as NNS. Two are run by the City Council and the others by a range of third sector organisations such as Age Concern, Birmingham Settlement and Green Square Accord, a local housing association. NNS teams support both social workers and the assets working locally. Mercy Rostron is an agency social worker and talks about how Yardley NNS, which is run by the Disability Resource Centre, and Age UK Birmingham has supported her. So when I see NNS, priority was to collate as many information as possible and successfully cascade them to professionals such as myself in the community so that we can help people that need it. I find that quite refreshing and very, very helpful. But when you're new to an area, everything is new to you. But when you know that there's a bank of knowledge out there, it is more than you can even imagine. Every time I need help, they're there. Um, I find myself seeking information on different types of voluntary supports and contacting Natalie on many occasions. I find her and her team approachable and always willing to help. I have asked so many inf information from NAS, from keeping fit, cookery courses, classes, knitting, places of worship, what they provide within the community, with coffee mornings, and to such other services as voluntary services within the uh, community and it has enhanced the delivery of my role as a community social worker and with the NNS I can eff effectively carry out one of the central role within the Care Act 2014 and ensuring that every citizen is empowered based on their strength, interests, needs and the community alike. NNS teams create a list of all activities and support available for the over 50s. They add this to the Connector support portal and keep this up to date. During the pandemic, this has been ever changing and included food and medicine delivery and health and wellbeing support for those isolating. NNS teams ensure social workers know about local activity. They go along to social work team meetings to provide updates, identify gaps and to introduce them to local assets. NNS teams also arrange networking events. Maureen Watson, the team manager for Hodge Hill, attended the first such event when her local NNS team launched in 2019. Yes, um, today has been an enjoyable day, meeting with all the um, asset providers, getting to know what they do as well, and it sort of broadens the um, arena for what our citizens can really experience, and that's 
really profound and I think that's great and just to find out how people can link together all the providers learn from each other as well develop their their, their scheme that's really going to be good so I'm really looking forward to what develops from today. Each NNS team manages a grants fund which is aimed at building local activities and services which are felt to be missing by the social work team and the local steering group. These grants vary from micro grants of £250 up to grants of £10,000. In Northfield, the micro grants have provided invaluable support to the, in the pandemic to help grassroots organisations. We are currently running our brand new Feel Great Tennis Sessions for over 50s. The project is offering free tennis sessions to adults in the local community to help improve mental well-being and physical fitness, especially for those isolated due to COVID-19. We've had a great response to the sessions with people who have never played tennis before, having a great time, socialising, feeling the mental health benefits of the sessions and leaving in a really positive mood. It's actually been a lifeline to us. And it was like a, a really gift from God to us when they, gave, when they helped us with the funding. And really thanks Sarah and Ali who helped me to um, put the bid together. Um, and since we've got the bid, we were able to really help the community with such a range of activities, uh, putting Tai Chi classes on, healthy eating classes on, um, and so much more. Um... NNS workers help develop local organisations by providing capacity building workshops on a wide range of topics. During the pandemic, these have moved online. They can be about developing voluntary and community organisations, such as funding and managing volunteers. Some build knowledge about topics like hoarding and mental health. During the pandemic, there have also been workshops about keeping COVID safe. They also provide bespoke advice. Preet Singh explains how Manjit, part of the Sutton NNS team, has ensured a much better local offer for the Punjab elders in North Birmingham, by providing support to the management committee and building up the skills of the participants. The initial months were very challenging because we were not getting many people and uh, we had around four regulars and then a few used to come and go uh, because they didn't feel that there were many people and there were no activities and stuff. And that's when uh, we met Najid. So you know, she called us and she said that she's a neighborhood coordinator and she would like to come and see us. So then she met us and then she's the one who structured the group and she said what activities we can do, how can we structure the group and stuff and that really helped. So when, when, the, when the seniors were coming, they were getting exercise and structure and then you know, some music and uh, some time for news and chit chat. So it was a you know, nice structure to it. So many people started coming. And then she helped us to get uh, the Friday group. Uh, you know, she also helped us to uh, kind of have the volunteers from within the group. So the seniors, you know, she developed the seniors how to conduct the group, how to keep records, you know, and stuff, and you know what they can do. So there are a couple of ladies who now uh, lead the group. So she developed them, and you know, so she did a lot of fantastic things for us. Manjit has been really very helpful to us. Social workers, other professionals, assets and active citizens form the steering groups for each constituency. These steer the direction of the team, identify priorities and gaps and form a place where information about local support is exchanged. Dr Suleiman, a local GP, met Andy Brown who runs Oasis Hubmore, the community charity connected to a local academy school at the Yardley NNS steering group. Dr. Solomon noted that up to a third of her patients visiting her surgery do not need medical intervention, but some form of social prescribing. So she visited Oasis Hub more to find out more. The realisation of what's out there really, um, and a lot of what our patients can use. So rather than coming to the GP surgery, I think this is a, probably a lot better place for us. Yeah, for us it's about um, transforming community, so we can't transform community on your own. There's loads of assets out there, so even those third of the people um, that, you know, they've got talents and they've got assets that they can use to help transform the neighbourhood, and it's about bringing them together. During the pandemic, we asked NNS teams to be responsible for coordinating support at a local level. 
and to use their grants to plug gaps, keep people fed, safe, healthy and happy. We found the relationships we had already developed were invaluable for understanding what the needs of the communities were and we really did get added value from this funding. The following examples of NNS grants during the pandemic demonstrate this. It's been my pleasure to be able to um, uh, use uh, the wonderful grant money from uh, Northfield to help us to keep in touch with our folk. There was over 70 people on our books and um, we've been able to employ a Sue for three hours a week who's enabled us to keep in touch with telephone groups and by uh, post and um, deal with individual problems and also to um, supply four deliveries over the year. Um, we did a Christmas parcel, we did afternoon tea, we did a fish and chip supper um, and um, this has all been very much uh, appreciated. The stories I want to share is uh, one of the mini plots here belongs to uh, a local lady who's 75 years old and <clears throat> she's recovering from Covid was absolutely um, housebound, socially isolated and was really on death's door, wouldn't come out of the house. Um, we've introduced uh, the allotments to her and now she comes regularly on a weekly basis. I told Paul about my iPad problem and he said we can give, lend you a tablet, which he did. And I found that was very useful. What I found was most useful was the exercise video for about 15 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes, we used to walk a mile on the spot. And it was absolutely wonderful time we had. From That gave me a lot of health benefit because yeah. I wasn't doing any other exercise. Patrick Saunders is chair of Quinton Active Residence Group and also a retired professor of public health. At the launch of his local NNS before lockdown, he summed up the preventative approach which underpins three conversations and the NNS model. It's primarily about improving and, and protecting people's and individuals' health and well-being. Increasing physical activity, improved access to good quality green space, safer homes, all those things will do exactly that. They'll improve and protect people's health and well-being. I'll leave the last words to my director and commissioning manager. If you just get commissioned at our service, you get what you pay for. And what we're getting is much more than that. And there's lots of really good examples, I think, of when you fund a project to do to not just give you a service, but to go beyond that, you know, help you build the communities, link up with others, that's when you see the real added value. And, and I mean, again, it's not from our perspective, it's from the perspective of our citizens, that's what they tell us, because they're, they're getting reconnected with the communities as well, so it's beneficial for them. As Prevention and Communities Commissioning Manager, I am really proud of what Neighbourhood Network schemes have achieved, and I'm really excited about what lays ahead. This really is, for me, community empowerment through social care, but also it supports wider adult social care priorities as well as the localism agenda and achieving Birmingham City Council's priorities in neighbourhoods.